In today's video, we go over how small business owners' uncertainty has hit an all-time high, but yet lenders are committing to funding $1 billion to small businesses at the same time. And lastly, a question we need to ask, was U.S. taxpayer money funding a nonprofit organization linked to the Wuhan lab and other Chinese programs that pose a security threat to our national defense through U.S. small business grants? Don't miss a thing as we go over everything you need to know about small business financing in the world today. As we dive into the current state of small businesses, it's clear that uncertainty is at an all-time high. According to a recent NFIB survey, NFIB saying National Federation of Independent Businesses, 34% of small business owners reported job openings that they could not fill, with 53% of those coming from the uh, construction sector alone. This reflects a broader trend of caution among entrepreneurs, leading to hesitance in capital spending and inventory investment. The chief economist at NFIB stated that small business owners are feeling more uncertain than ever. Uncertainty makes owners hesitant to invest, especially as inflation and financing costs continue to pressure their bottom lines. He noted that the average rate on short-term loans has climbed to 10.1%, the highest since February of 2001 adding to the challenges faced by these businesses. Added with this sentiment, financial experts pointed out that small business optimism is as low as it has been in a long time. The expert claimed that optimism has fallen well below the 50-year average benchmark in 1998 since the Biden-Harris administration took over a few years ago. They attributed this decline to significantly higher energy and gas prices compared to when Trump was in office, with consumer confidence today being 30% lower than what it was then. However, not all perspectives align with this sense of worry. Tom Sullivan, VP of the Small Business Policy at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, presents a more optimistic view. He indicates that despite lingering inflation concerns, small business optimism is on the rise as inflation rates begin to drop. Interestingly, small business owners are anticipating a post-election bump in sales and revenue regardless of the election outcome. In fact, 70% of small businesses are more attuned to this election than four years ago, believing that this election's results will directly impact their operations. Key economic indicators such as interest rates and gas prices are gradually improving, suggesting a more favorable environment for small businesses in 2025. To back up these sentiments, recent data from On Deck and Oculus reveals critical insights into small business financing. A survey of 413 small businesses with working capital loans from On Deck indicates that access to credit remains a pressing issue for many owners. In fact, 75% of small businesses reported bypassing traditional bank loans, opting for alternative lenders as their primary funding source. Yet optimism persists. 91.5% of small business owners anticipate moderate to significant growth over the next six months. Moreover, 71% reported having enough cash to cover at least one month of operating expenses. However, challenges remain. 50% of respondents cited that hassle of paperwork is a primary reason for turning to alternative lenders, and 25% of those who applied for traditional bank loans were denied. Initially, the payroll to revenue ratio currently sits at 18.63%, reflecting ongoing financial pressures. So while some surveys highlight the anxiety of small business owners, others reflect a cautiously optimistic outlook for the future. How will these contrasting sentiments shape the sentiments of small business owners moving forward? Stay tuned as we continue to explore this evolving landscape. As we've discussed, small business owners are grappling with significant uncertainty. Yet amidst this challenging landscape, there are noteworthy funding developments that are shaping the future of entrepreneurship. Let's start with some impressive numbers reported recently in the SBA lending sector. One major player announced record loan closings for Q3 of 2024, funding a staggering $371.8 million among these loans, $245.3 million coming from SBA 7A loans, reflecting a 12.5% growth year over year mark. This trend shows promise as they project to reach $935 million in SBA 7A loans funding by the end of 2024, an increase of 14.7 from last year, making them a top three projected SBA 7A lender for this year. Can you guess which lender is leading the charge here? If you guessed New Tech One or New Tech Bank, then you are a winner. Yes, New Tech Bank, they just went public. I believe it was last year, two years ago. They, they used to be a broker of SBA loans. Now they are a direct funder of SBA loans. So congratulations to New Tech. 
they go from broker to a top three funder in a very short amount of time. So congrats to New Tech and all of your growth. In another development, a prominent lender has announced a three-year financing commitment to investors that will enable them to inject $1 billion into U.S. small and medium-sized businesses over the next three years. With a successful track record of funding over 200,000 businesses in Europe, this expansion into the U.S. market is set to create a significant impact for ULIN. Moving on, a transformer manufacturing cooperative in West Tennessee known as Ermco is getting major upgrades and enhanced production capabilities as well as hiring 400 new employees. Thanks to a $54.1 million dollar funding package of new markets tax credits from the following lenders rural development partners or rdp of 15 million dollars muni strategies of 13 million cadence of 10 million dollars pathway lending of 9 million and grow america of 7.1 million dollars up next a story about a small business that is 10 years old and is continued to develop an automated program identifying individuals in need of preventative care as this winston-salem north carolina company looks to innovate cancer prevention and promote health equity, they recently received significant support from a well-known federal program. The recipient, known as Empath, has secured a remarkable $3 million in funding. The breakdown includes $2 million awarded through the Small Business Tech Grant from the National Institute of Health, or NIH, and a $1 million equity investment led by Oncology Partners, a venture capital firm de dedicated to oncology. This funding could be a game changer, allowing Empath to expand its vital services and enhance healthcare outcomes. If you're in the healthcare sector, be sure to explore opportunities with the NIH and other grant providers like the Small Business Innovation Research Grants and the Small Business Technology Transfer, also known as the SBIR and STTR programs to see if you qualify for similar healthcare industry grants. On a local level, a city is launching a new business loan program with a $100,000 pool, allowing small businesses to apply for loans ranging from $5,000 to $20,000. This initiative aims to support entrepreneurs and stimulate local economic growth. The program is being introduced in Des Moines, Iowa. So if you're a small business owner in Des Moines, be sure to reach out to your economic development authority and see if you qualify for one of these loans. Meanwhile, another economic development corporation has announced $1.2 million in funding available for businesses with loans of up to $500,000 at an interest rate as low as 5%. This effort is designed to help businesses refinance high interest debt and expand their operations. The organization behind this initiative is the Bronx EDC or Bronx Economic Development Corporation. So if you have a small business in the Bronx, be sure to reach out to the Bronx EDC. And let's not forget about small business micro loan programs in Michigan, which are receiving an $11 million boost from the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Community Development Financial Institutions Fund or CDFI Fund. This funding will help numerous businesses expand and thrive in their communities. So while the uncertainty looms large for small business owners, influx of funding and support from various lenders offers a glimmer of hope. How will these funding offers influence the landscape for small businesses in the coming months? Stay tuned with us as we unpack these developments. However, not all developments in the funding landscape are viewed positively, particularly when it comes to the potential allocation of taxpayer dollars. Recent discussions have emerged regarding the use of small business grants and how they could impact the domestic economy. Many taxpayers are increasingly concerned about where their hard-earned money is going, especially with ongoing debates about funding priorities. With small businesses already facing challenges with inflation, among other issues, we need to make sure that what the taxpayers are paying into with these small business grants, those dollars that are allocated to the small business grants, we need to make sure that the grants are staying with American companies. They're not going to foreign companies. We can't let small business grants go to companies, especially China and our other competitors. We can't let the money go towards funding for our companies. We need to make sure that we are funding American companies. Amidst those conversations, Senator Jody Ernst of Iowa has raised important questions about the oversight of these grants. As scrutiny intensifies, taxpayers are demanding greater transparency and accountability in how these funds are allocated. They want assurances that their investments will bolster the U.S. economy rather than support foreign interests. This brings us to a troubling possibility. Did you know that these grants have helped Chinese researchers fund more than 1,000 patents since 2010? Most importantly, patents that are in biotechnology and semiconductors, which are 
very important to the U.S. defense. Even worse yet, the NIH, yes, the NIH that I mentioned earlier in this video about being able to access grants, previously funded a nonprofit organization called EcoHealth Alliance that worked hand in hand with the Wuhan lab in China. EcoHealth is now barred from receiving taxpayer funds after the research and scrutiny done from a congressional panel in investigating the pandemic. Small business owners, how do you feel that your tax dollars that were supposed to go to small business grants for companies that are located in the U.S. that focus on research and innovation for U.S. taxpayers was actually sent to support an organization that was linked to the Wuhan lab in China? If you like this video and want to see more about small business news every single day, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It supports us so much, so I appreciate it. We do this every day, folks. Thank you all so much for supporting, and we'll see you in the next one.